Welcome to episode 31. We have Alpha eager to do a recap. Alpha, take it away. <laughs> Why, yes, the blood of the heathens must flow. We must teach them the error of their ways. They shall suffer. <laughs> At the mighty fists of Gond. Oh, yes. It is the true fist that they must worry about. They think their chrome will, will protect them. However, it shall chip and rust away to nothingness. Ooh, I like that. So, to actually catch up a little more of the story thus far, Alpha just found out this last episode that his progenitor is now deceased. He did this by finding out that the link that he had marked on his hand went dark. At the same time, we also had a very nice bonding experience with Kassaros and Margaret, where Kassaros found out that Margaret is also the carrier of the key. Dane was running through the woods and finally caught up and joined them in town, and Ray has been kind of the de facto guardian hanging out, guiding, etc., and got to have a very fun piggyback ride on Alpha's back as he ran absurdly fast through the forest, amazingly without tripping. Also, must, get up faster. What? Move, 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 move. must go faster. Must, must get up. Must move faster. faster. Move, 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 move. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to where we are at now, which is in Margaret's little home village in the forest south on the southern continent, uh, south of the capital. And a new day dawns. And it is yours. Margaret, to she does definitely not Thatcher. <laughs> yes, she is not a Thatcher. <laughs> She makes a darn good bed. All right. So, I've been thinking about this since last time. I still can't think of a way to keep Margaret safe, but also have a key. <laughs> Shouldn't I ask? Say what? You broke up. You dropped out. Oh, I said that. Was, that's the key question we must answer. Wah, wah. Uh -huh. <laughs> puns. Nothing but puns. All the puns. I just... I, I want to keep her safe. And that's D&D. 50% imagination, 10% math, 40% puns. Yeah. I thought you are going to do something like 50% math, 50% puns, and 30% you know. Well, you've run out of percent. That's hey, that we give over a 100% in this group. We never just settle at 100%. That's right. I have all the Willy Wonka mathematics. <laughs> it's like how a bar barbarian can on strength. Uh, we go over 100% here. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, it is, now you're getting to the realm of imaginary numbers, which they use in fair math all the time. In or in comic art. Your imagination. Oh, we are so focused today. Um, yep. All right. Uh, all right. So, I guess I should ask the party what they think. All right, party, what do you guys think? Well, either we use Margaret... Or we have to find some other key, which I'm not sure we can do in well, a timely fa manner. It's like a generational thing with Margaret's family. So she's probably the only one we have right now. So we have to use Margaret, whether you like it or not. Uh, we're going to bring Al uh, Margaret with us. Alpha, can you make her some armor? <laughs> so that she doesn't die after getting hit once. Hmm. I'm wondering if Alpha would actually make the armor or train her to be more durable. Nah, he would just make armor. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of chrome armor laying around. There, there is. There's pieces he could repurpose. Yep. But they are besmirched with chrome. They must be cleansed first. Alright, then. Perform a baptism. <laughs> baptize the pieces of armor. <laughs> well, it's gone, so you'd have to baptize it <laughs> in Etch fire. It. <laughs> but Gond would be a fan of chemical etching. <laughs> I just think he'd just put it in a flame for a while, let it get red hot, and then cool it back down again. You know? The Melt away the impurities. Exactly. The purifying uh, fire of Gond. 
That's actually a good philosophy to have. Melt away the impurities. We must burn all the heathens. Good job, Dane. <laughs> now Alpha's gonna start burning bodies. No, actually, that might be we... fun. Human bon- or orc bonfire. With glittering pieces of chrome armor in the midst of it. Again, getting off track here. Anyway, sorry. I'll have to Poor go <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break the news to Margaret that pretty much the only way we can do this is if she were is if she were to come with us. Um well of course I'll I'll follow you anywhere. I still feel like I'm pressuring her. <laughs> She's the last person I would want to pressure in this life. No, she seems very eager and not not pressured I'm at all. Pressure. Okay, that's fine then. Cool. All right, Margaret, we're going to go on an adventure. Please do you have any survival experience other than, you know, staying inside a protective barrier against the pumpkin keen after all these years. Um, what what do you mean by survival? I'm I'm very good at um, pickling. Um, I, I, I make a nice wart. Uh, I can make all sorts of survival foods that will keep us alive through the long winter nights. Mm -hmm, that's can, can you reliably helpful. produce exploding babies? Or do, is this still a, a matter of like random chance for you? Um, I've, I've never had any babies. And you see her look up at Kasros with big doe eyes. Ah! Ooh! Excellent opportunities, then. Please, proceed to reproduce. Ah! Uh, ah! <laughs> uh, no, well, Casros, you got a job to do! No! <laughs> Not uh, happening! What, yeah, what is the average time for, for reproduction in this sense? Say hmm. what? That is what a is good the question. average time for reproduction in this sense? Well, since she's human, nine. Well, yeah, since she's human, nine months. But what? But she, uh, Castus is a tiefling. Do they have the same gestation? I don't think it would matter much. She's just donating sperm. It's her. It's her egg. Her womb. So I would assume. Why are we having this conversation? <laughs> because well, we must test the efficiency. Baby. If it's if it's an extended period of time, that would be inefficient reproduction. We must improve wow. efficiency. We're, we're organics. It, it's inherently inefficient. Okay, well, D&D &D Wiki actually has a, a roll table for everything from fertility through, like, chance of multiples. All Ow. sorts of stuff. Holy crap. It, I don't think it's really going to matter that much because I, I have a strong suspicion that Kathros is literally going to lock it up. So, um... <laughs> what up? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like... Exactly. I will I'm say, though... Saying, well, I yeah. would do anything Yeah, that's not happening. Not anytime love, soon. But I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just wow, gonna... Alpha, even if there were to ever come a child from Margaret, uh, if it does not explode upon the act of birth, then that means it is a dud baby, and you cannot have it for experimentation. Oh, but what if we can convert the duds into live munitions? They could increase no. efficiency potentially. All right, you can do that with other babies as much as you want. If it's my baby, you can't do that. But I give my babies to the party's good usage every time they are born. Why would you not do the same? Well, it's sort of like how different things mean a different amount of importance to different people, Alpha. <laughs> um, but Alpha, this I, is a very these interesting... Are, these are questions to me. And I grant them um, sacrifice for you. Why would you oh not grant God. the same? Do your babies, would they actually be viable organisms on their own? Would they actually live? Potentially. Have he we ever given know. them the opportunity? He was a construct. How would he know? No. 
Does this mean I, I do not have viability on my own? <laughs> no, that's not the question I was asking. That oh. would be funny if Alpha just exploded. <laughs> no. Oh, it's only a baby thing. Um, <laughs> Crazy Eddie's used cars. The, the, fact, the fact that he's actually producing the babies as part of his equipment means that he probably has a fairly decent idea of the schematics. I mean, you're obviously going to have to use raw products going in to produce the baby. Um, I would think he should have, even though he's a construct and the baby's a construct, he should have at least an inkling of whether or not the baby construct would actually function like he functions or if it's just basically a baby-shaped bomb. Well, of course it could function. However, just like any sort of construct, you must imbue it with some sort of essence. Just like you have an essence and I have an essence. It is merely a matter of whether we imbue that or not. Would you like to oh, have your God. essence imbued into a product? I will be happy no, to I, assist. Yeah, I bet you I, would. I, no, I, I'm good right now. I just had a brilliant idea. A, a, an extra bit of like rage mechanic for Alpha could be like as the followers of Chrome, like the leadership are killed, he imbues their essence into baby bombs just so he can blow them up again. Ooh, I like this idea. <laughs> Oh, God. That is pretty hilarious. They shall be useful to Gond, even in death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We've Boy, gotten absolutely this... nothing done. <laughs> That's fine. Um, this is great. Yeah. I love our conversations. All right. So, I guess you've decided Margaret's going to go with you? Yep. I'm going to have right. to train her. I'm going to start teaching her how to defend herself. We'll start with some basics and then potentially try teaching her druid magic. We'll see. Ooh. Okay, it's going to be a pretty how... tough role, but I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, I was able to learn druid magic on my own, so why shouldn't I be able to teach her? A good point. Yeah, well, are you guys going to head off? Uh, I want Alpha to make armor for Margaret first. <laughs> Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, very well. Are you what's, sure you what's would not part? prefer me to make her synthetic body to embody instead? This would be much more efficient. No, I'm I'm good. Please, that, allow that, her to remain organic. That might uh, impair her ability to function as a key if you change her body. Ah, logical. Very well. Good idea. <laughs> okay, so I guess... He would have to construct a forge. I'm assuming, well, they would have something for like shoeing horses and so forth, yeah. mending agricultural implements. So you just could use what they have, maybe make a couple modifications. And he has integrated tools as an envoy of God. True. All right. Well, I guess roll blacksmithing. I'm going to say, well, hmm. let's start with a 1d20 plus, I guess, your proficiency bonus and dexterity. Okay, so proficiency is here. Dexterity is that. All right, so... That's a 23. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, he... with, with, with dexterity plus proficiency, that's plus nine. <laughs> so I don't have to oh, roll geez. that high. <laughs> good point. Good point. Yeah, I was thinking a, a 20 would be a good, you know, set level to go, you know, off of. But yeah, that's that's great. You take a bunch of the broken chrome pieces. You kind of find the the best ones and you you shape them into i guess typical female fantasy armor that can protect her so what it has like just protects her boobs and reproductive areas but not actually any real production but somehow it gives you a higher armor class no 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 i i was thinking it <laughs> you know 
more like a full plate because that's what Casros would want, but you specifically like make like boob space. Okay. I can see it. All right. This will be interesting to see because I see Margaret is like a more, you know, fragile. Uh, woman, and now we're just throwing her in a giant plate of armor, like, 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 plate armor. Okay, but well, maybe not she plate, then. Maybe she... Here, let me roll... Let's do a strength check on her. Ooh. Yeah, he, she puts the armor on and can barely move. She's like, it's... It's great, but it's heavy. Oh. Alright, we're gonna have to lighten you know, it. <laughs> just, uh, just a breast and back plate. I'm I'm assuming. Um It adds about a hundred pounds to her overall physique, which is already about probably a hundred pounds. Yeah, it's it's just too much for her. She really can't wear that. I mean it's it's beautiful. You did great work. It's just so it's too heavy for her. Alright, maybe if we had the ability to find a wear bear, we can get her bitten so she can transform and then make it bearable. Oh my god. Yeah. Maybe no. not. No, that would be a whole other quest to go on. Okay, so is there like a tannery? A tanner in this village? Oh yes, definitely. Well, uh, how about um, since the plate's not going to be a thing, uh, can Alpha fashion leather armor? Oh, yeah, I'd say he can. Yeah. I mean, it's considerably less protection, but more flexibility. Maybe go for, like, a, a scale mail, you know? With, like, the plates, mm. just cut them off and bolt them onto the leather. So a little more yeah. cutting protection. That works. Yeah, that works. How about, like, a, uh, like a studded leather? Instead of a yeah. full scale, like yeah, do the scale pieces, but like a studded, so there's the parts to you know a sword can bounce off of. Well, if he Brooke. only had enough time and enough glue, he could even make paper armor. Yeah, I'm thinking paper mache is not the not the word, way to go. Um, I like know we're just paper, having like a design for my part. No, you need to look up uh, like ancient Chinese and Japanese paper armor where it's layered on. You can basically become a porcupine and still be fighting ready because the paper actually absorbs all the uh, kinetic impact and dissipates oh, it out. Yeah. So it looks like scale mail, but it's all paper, so it's super light. It's mm. like the the ice ships of World War II. Mm. Except I have one design request that doesn't have to do with like actual like strength of the armor. Okay. I want a rose to get carved into it. Oh, perfect. Well, let's have can I, can Alpha roll. One, can I bolt one what? on instead of carving? I mean, carving might weaken the structural integrity. However, adding on top would be much more efficient. Bolting works. Oh, yes, yeah. that's fine, Alpha. <laughs> or stitch it in Very if it's well. leather. Yeah, yeah I guess roll, for roll a leather craft. Same thing you did before. Dex plus my proficiency, nine. Uh, this one's not so good. It's only twenty-two. <laughs> it's almost only the same. 22. But she puts it on, and she just it's moves like water. She is so fluid in it. She can move around. She feels great. All right, that, that's good. And that should put her armor class at least close to. Uh, Ray and Castro's thing, because I think they both wear leather armor as well, right? Yep, yep. Well, let's see. So she's... So leather armor is stated as 11 plus dex modifier. She probably has a pretty decent dex. So let's put her at, like, call it a 13 AC. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> and what this you like in watching the the party Alpha wears no here. armor. And you're like, oh, you... He's so good, but Alpha doesn't wear any armor. I mean, she could be uh, just as efficient if with the right training. We're not giving That's her not. some bod synthetic body, Alpha. I think he's talking about turning her into a monk. 
Yeah, it might take, yeah. you know, a few years, but are we in any rush? Yeah. Yes, actually, we kind of yes, are. Yes, we are. <laughs> That's our, oh, anyway, it was in, I think one of you was trying to say something. Yeah, I just, uh, this episode watches the whole party contributes to make a character. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, well, she's in leather armor. All right. All right, so we have a key. Um, I thought we were supposed to be going to find uh, Theseus level type weapons to help us combat the boss and everything else that's kind of becoming an issue in the on the plane right now. Yeah, supposed to. You don't have to. It's up to you. It was. I would feel a lot better if I had a Theseus level weapon to use against something like the boss who seems to have like a gazillion hit points and and a uh, crazy henchman galore. Well, the crazy henchman galore are only a problem temporarily if you can uh, <laughs> jump, get the jump on them fast enough. True. Um, you don't have to be work smarter, not harder. Yes, and and how well did that work for for Braun and the rest of the uh, old companions? Yeah, uh, see, they were working harder, not smarter. Uh huh. Anyway, um, Jesus. <laughs> so you. Just- Sneak attack, everything, which we we either nail our sneaks or absolutely ruin them. I don't, it, it, it's, yeah, it's so hard to tell. If, if we ruin them, what's our plan B? I Work like harder, not smarter. The attack was pretty effectively nailed in the last one. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, for now, we need to go find the gate and use Margaret. Yeah, I honestly think we should go weapon hunting. What we have is, I mean, yeah, we'll have to go back to the librarian. Because I think that's where we need to find out the locations of these other things. He told you last time. So what? He told you last episode when you were reading the book. He told you, gave you all the information for where things are. I think you did write a note, Dane. Um, but we have short attention spans. There was killing to be done. This is true. There was killing. I suddenly teleported away and disappeared, you know. So, what? The gate's prob. Eh. Like, I get what you mean by if we face end up facing the boss, we should have better weapons. But at the same time, it's we, we kind of don't have the time. <laughs> the gate is kind of a big priority at the moment. Why is the gate a priority? Because that's what we were supposed to do. Yeah, but if we get uh, Margaret, not Thatcher, better armed, she might be better able to defend herself. Herself. You're right. As we have but... time constraints, you don't exactly have time to go uh, sword shopping. <laughs> But we do have time to go sword chopping. Sword chopping. I mean, yeah, fine. We can go find some weapons first. That's fine. For now, I'll lend right. Margaret my dagger and start teaching her how to at least swing that. <laughs> she, you hand it to her, and she looks really confused and. She kind of holds it meekly in her hand. Um, you just want me to, like, practice swinging it? I just want you to have something that you could protect yourself with if I wasn't there to protect you. Oh, okay. And she, like, finds a spot in the armor that kind of accepts it and she's able to slide it in little like holster on her leg. Mm. All right. Um, 
So looking at my um, notes here. So we've got the the Tome of uh, Arcanorum power. Uh, yes, the Grimoire. The Grimoire. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Stone of Spikes. Yes. Uh, perfect choreography. Yes. Is that a spell? No, it's just an oh, item. Chronography. That's chronography. Sorry, not choreography. Chronography. Can't remember. <laughs> I would have given right. you both. You're a perfect choreography. Where everyone must dance. <laughs> yes, that's why I would have given it to you. The the D and D world suddenly becomes a musical, and every nearby person begins si- dancing in sync and singing the same song, and they all know the words. Yep. Isn't that a bard skill or something? I don't think it it's might a skill, be. But I, I don't know. An ability. I've never advanced a bard far enough. <laughs> okay. Um. How I mean, imagine the capital is a far distance away. Yeah, it's like a day and a half travel. You you've done the trek before. Oh, it's only a day and a half. Okay, well, it's like a day and a half to get to the port, and then another half a day to get to the actual capital. So you know, in two full days, you could get to the shores of the, the capital. Okay. Um, refresh my memory. Are we on a different landmass than the capital right now? Yes, you are. That's what I thought. But once you get, if you start heading north from where you're at, you know, following the old road, it'll, a full day will get you basically to, like, out of the woods and into the savannah, and then another, like, half day will get you across the savannah and into the town, and then from the town you could take a boat over to the capital. Okay, because it looks like everything that we're supposed to be looking for um, is basically south of the capital. At least the tome is, and this mannequin this mannequin appears to be in the capital. Or at least that's where its last known whereabouts are, so... Hmm. I'm a... You guys should also do a review of all of the stuff you're carrying at some point. Well, I've got the Simeon Death Mask that I have no idea how to use. Um, uh, what else do I have? Um, I was thinking of the others, but yeah, you should, good idea to look. Isn't Alpha carrying a mask of someone as well? Oh yeah, like the Demon Mask. Yeah, the Demon Warlord Mask. Oh, yeah, that you stole from off of me. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, because you were yeah. going insane. And I still have the one owl one, right? Yep. Yes. The Aracocra. Aracocra. Yeah. Whatever happened, and then there's there was one other. Did did you still have the? Uh, was it like the dragon mask or devil mask from the, like the episode devil mask, three? Yeah, from like a while ago. Yeah, I still have that one too. Yeah, the one that got stuck and you couldn't get it off. Yeah, that it's one. A little bit. It was fine. But yeah, that's the one that like invokes like a fear type radiant around. Yep. And then there there were some other things that you guys have picked up along the way. I think Dane uh, picked up a whole bunch of rocks at some point. Yeah, we've used a bunch of those. There was also Oh, one of them, Ray or Casros, has a bag of beans. Be There's me. also there was something else in there too. Didn't one of you grab the book uh, and take it to the university or something like that? That might have been me a long time ago. Well, I think I might. Still oh, the have one that. with the dragon. No, it was one from the library. Remember the one our original town that we were in where everyone started you were uh moving so slow and we were moving normally and they kept slowing further and further down and then i think i ended up just taking the book from the librarian uh, because he couldn't see me take it anyway and i took it back to the inn and read through it um oh yeah that's right 
I don't remember what that book was about. Um, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was information on the old ones or not, but, uh, yeah, so. Did you leave it in the town or do you still have it? No, I probably still have it. It's not that heavy, so I probably kept it. Okay, that's curious. I'd have to go and look. Um, but uh, yeah, I've kind of forgotten about that. Um, Alpha gave up his cool um, death ray staff. He gave that to Braun. Yeah, so it's back in the city of Brass. Other than that, it's just we've got random masks and beans. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what I was curious about. I mean, Alpha also has, like, darts that are useless and an explorer backpack where he keeps his rope and torches. Right. Which is useful. Yeah. I have a small pack, but I could probably... I should probably fashion something bigger soon. So, anyway. Yeah, that's, that's what we have. I don't know. Um... I, yeah, unless we get some kind of divine guidance that kind of gives us a clear b blueprint for defeating these people, um, I'm not <clears throat> confident that what we have is good enough yet. And that's all. Mm. So, I mean... Uh, our, our level isn't high enough yet. We're not, you know, for a level 20, that would probably be something different. Um, but yeah, we're going up against, I don't know, these old ones, and which I'm not even sure what their stats are like. And then plus the boss who pretty easily handled our, our companions. So I just... I don't think we're prepared. And well, yes. if we if we rush headlong in right now, as we are, I think we're gonna lose and lose badly. So. Mm. All right. Go. We Raising need, stats. We need we need a plan. While we walk, I'll train Margaret. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I know. Okay, so you're gonna start walking towards the town? Yes. North, take say take the north road, try and get to a yep. ship. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh let's do a Castro's training roll. Just roll that twenty. <laughs> if uh, you do if, a D twenty. I meant a D twenty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I was to say if you do roll a Nat twenty. <laughs> I roll thirteen. Thirteen. She is very attentive to you and basically follows your directions and does a pretty good job uh, starting to learn just some basics right now, yeah. but gets the principles of like throwing her weight and, you know, drawing her dagger quickly, you know, basically very like proud that. of her. I'm very proud of you, Margaret. That's right. You should give her uh, Ursula. Ursula, it's like never forget the importance of body language. It's not body language; it's body mass. Um, but like, <laughs> well, and then that evening, you guys sit around the campfire, and she makes ooh a really good stew. Yeah, Margaret, and she dirty twenty the stew so. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, she, she's learning, and you guys are seeing the value of full stomachs and someone that can, you know, make really good food for you. It's definitely not the uh, dried rations of, you know, your previous encampments. Yeah, I mean, Castro's infamous, uh, was it bread? Yeah, it was yes. bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the choke-proof sloth bread. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jeremy liked it. Oh, he likes the soup a lot too. You give him a little spoonful and he just almost purrs like a cat. Aw. It just takes him two hours to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like fifteen a minutes for a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Awesome. So we'll we'll, well take turns. We'll have uh, watch shifts. Yep. Oh yeah. Don't worry about it. You, there's an amazing sense of calm that is kind of around you, and you make it through the night without incident. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, the next day you continue. Get up with the sun and. Around high noon, you enter, actually just after high noon, the shadows are starting to show up behind you. You enter into town. All right, cool. We immediately look for a boat to take us to the capital city. Awesome. Well, the the ferries are available uh, on the north docks. That's the shortest path to the capital. So you go down there and you easily find someone with space to haul everyone across. Margaret is just absolutely wide-eyed at everything, like following you but stopping. And at one point, there's one of the big trading houses down on the docks and she just taps Castros on the back a few times and she's just in awe and says, "I, I didn't know people could build such things. And she's just shocked by, like, the grandeur of everything. She's never seen, you know, Aww. a community like this. I glance around at my party and then, like, lean into her and be like, you want to go take a quick look around? She just kind of nods her head silently. All right, so I'll go ahead and, like, lead her through things and kind of explain what she doesn't understand. <laughs> awesome. Just for fun, roll me a performance check. Oh, God. <laughs> well. <laughs> Five. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the you... way they fell in love was because of his bad performance checks. True. <laughs> well, it, yep. And, and it comes off like you're talking to like you're a mermaid talking to a crab and seagull. Or she is. Castros goes on a whole thing of, yep, that's a thingamajig. And that's a who's it. And that's a what's it. And. The, we call that the uh, the big place. <laughs> I mean, sounds about as correct as anything. <laughs> yeah, thus proving that an education is actually something you need to have. Bah, whatever. A rose by any other name is still a rose. <laughs> no. No, no yeah. A rose by any other name would smell the same, would smell as sweet. But it would no longer be a rose. It would be a juniper or a tulip or whatever its new name was. It's still the same. Still smells just the same. Still functions it's just the same. Still withers and is covered with thorns ready to strike. <laughs> just imagining the Incredibles 2 line. Rose is rose! <laughs> math is math! All right. One one times one is two. <laughs> that must be new math. Math's not important. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> says, the, says the theater kid. <laughs> if you teach a child mathematics, they can pass a math test. <laughs> well, that's anyway. Definitely the short sighted way to look at it. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking of there's that great Bushism when he was like, if you teach a child to read, he or she can pass a literacy test. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> George George W. was not um, the sharpest president we've ever had. Yet yeah, also not the dullest. I know. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. He's a solid mid-range on the pencil scale. <laughs> I would I would have thought bottom third, but okay. It's well, 
it's amazing how many of these co Congress people are actually Harvard and Yale and Princeton educated because, uh, well, they sure don't show it. You know about that, right? I mean, like they skew their grades so they can always show that they have like straight A's. So uh, getting a, I think it's a C at OSU is roughly equal to an A at Harvard. You're kidding. No, it, they actually intentionally skew the grades. It's way easier to, to get to go to Harvard than it is basically any other accredited school. The only reason that they can keep getting away with it is because of all the legacies and the name and the money and yada yada. It's a lot harder to get into Harvard than OSU, though, right? Oh, it's much more difficult to get in. I mean, unless you had family that, you know, went there, or pays a bunch of money for you to go there. But right. uh, they don't need the money at all, even. I mean, their endowment fund is billions of dollars. They could give everyone a free education if they wanted. No, which they don't. Of course not. Of course not. It's about creating scarcity. Right. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, okay, so Castros is off, wandering around. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess I'm we waiting on all the people. I, I did yes. think it was kind of funny that he was the one that was telling us about our, the, our um, truncated timeline, and he's the one that wanders off, so. Well, he's Where in he... love. It, it happens. I don't know that he's in love. I think she is. Well, it's he just doesn't realize it yet. Talk about love like not here, will you? Because you're not. No. It's like all right. Like those. It, it's like uh, the rom com. Uh, God, what is that one? Sorry, I know this because um, mom puts like movies on. And she'll watch the same movie thirty or forty times just on loop. Yeah. I, I um, do the same thing too. Well, not in a row, but. I've done it with like the two towers. Yeah, but no, she does it with like rom coms and stuff. There was one of them, but anyway, it's the trope where you know, like the best friend is getting married, and then midway through the movie, they realize, oh, I'm absolutely in love with them, and therefore I should be with them, you know. And then they destroy the wedding and run off together. Uh, that's not well. One that sounds a little bit like The Graduate, but that's not a rom com. Uh, my best friend's wedding, but she doesn't end up with him. What's the um, one? What's the the one with the uh, uh, the guy that goes to Scotland as like the bridesmaid? Goes to not four weddings and a funeral. No, but that one is really funny. I've never actually watched that one. Oh, it's goes so good. Peter Dinklage Scotland is amazing. Bridesway. Bridesmaid. At you know, it's kind of funny. I thought I'd seen most rom-coms, but that does not sound familiar to me. I just remember Mom had it on. Anyway, the whole thing is he, he goes over to support his best friend. She's getting married to this Scottish guy who's just like a total weirdo. And I don't under understand why she's getting married to him other than he has money in there. And they were trying to sell the trope of, you know, women will marry anyone with money. It's Hollywood. So Any yeah. anyway, uh, the point is... I was trying to get at the trope here of, you know, Castro just doesn't realize that through this friendship that he's actually falling for this person who is already basically fallen for him. Yes, well, I guess we'll see how it develops. Because the only ship Castro needs is friendship. Friendship, companionship from animals, not humans. Yes. But this is the one human that's different. For some reason, there is something different. Even Cassius has said it about Margaret. Yeah. It's like cosmic, it's divine or something. Okay. All right. So anyway, so we secure a ferry and then we wait for Cassius to come back with Margaret in tow. I said it would be a quick thing and it was quick. I'm just showing Margaret what she's never seen before. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure industrialization. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Wow. All right. All right. So do we finally get on the ferry then? Does Castro's come yes. back? And are we on the ferry? Yeah, Castro's comes back. You get on the ferry. Okay. You guys make it across the relatively smooth inland waters to the capital. And it's 
all the glory that you remember, and she's even in more shock because the surrounding town that you came from is like one tenth of the wealth of the capital, and it just is magnificent. All right, sounds good. Um, Alpha, do you remember any when they were talking about this this mannequin? Uh, did they give the mannequin any like a name or anything? Oh gosh, would Alpha remember? I don't uh, personally remember. No, it would have been in I the think. book, and I don't believe that. No, that was the one with the page that was ripped away. Okay. So I guess Alpha's is B. No. So yeah, you'd want to. I don't know. Figure out where it might be somewhere in town. All right. Well, I guess we go to the nearest library. Oh, the central library. The You've been there before. You know. Yep. You know the way. Yep. We kind of head there, I guess. Awesome. And you, uh, you go inside and you see the Arakokra that tends the the library, sitting there at the front desk. Who, who's there? Um, it's us again. Uh, we are seeking information on um a mannequin of ancient times. It appears to be a lifeless doll, but it can be brought to life. It was last seen somewhere in this city. Mm. Ooh. Stories, stories. Up here, up here. And it takes off flying up into the second level. There's a spiral staircase off to the side for you to go up to follow. All right. We follow in the spiral staircase. <laughs> so on this level, you see a bunch of like collections of folklore stories and so forth. And the owl kind of looks around and then pulls out a book and hands it over to you. Uh, it says, uh, what is it? City Tales. Okay. Well, I open it up and start flipping through it, looking for references to some kind of a doll or a mannequin. Okay, roll a investigation. Oh, no. Okay, um, one second. Fifteen. Ooh, good. See, you did good. Yeah, for a change. You flip through and you find the story of a king of a couple hundred years prior who had put out a competition to have a doll made. Something that would be entertaining and fun. And after some time, there was a bunch of entrants, but one clear winner arose it was a roughly human-sized approximately king-shaped mannequin that when different masks were put on its face it would do th things like dance around sword fight do all sorts of performances in mime for the king and everything was going just wonderful until one day when in mid-performance the king's daughter was running across the throne room to see him. He was watching the performance and didn't notice her until it was too late. The mannequin turned and swung and ran her through the neck. It was then that the king ordered the mannequin thrown out, and it was tossed directly out of the throne room, where it fell down to the streets and was picked up by someone. But that is where the recording stops. A couple hundred years ago, huh? Okay. Um, so it still gives us not much to work with. No, it doesn't. Um, the new owner's name was Kane. 
So, uh, does this tale reference the builder's name? It it just says the doll maker. Okay. Well, I asked the librarian. Um, so good, sir. Is there a family in town that specializes in making dolls or toys? You see a feathered arm go up across its mouth as it would almost be scratching its chin and says, Yes, yes. Hmm. Down. Down the street. By the. The clothing shops. Yes, yes. Down by the clothing shops. They make the most amazing lifelike dolls for all the kids. All right. Sounds good. We'll start our search there. Awesome. Well, you walk out and kind of down the street and you see the merchant area with a variety of shops. There's, you know, clothing makers and sellers of imports from all over the kingdoms. There are butchers, there are bakers, there are candlestick makers. Yep. Okay. So we kind of head on down until I'm I'm assuming that where he sent us was kind of a toy store. Uh more or less, yes. And you do eventually come across something that has several very lifelike, creepily lifelike dolls on display. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, we go inside and we ask to speak to the proprietor. Oh, how are you doing? Would you like one of my dolls? I see you have uh, at least a couple uh, rather young with you, perhaps planning for future children. Oh, Why, I yes. Think... I plan for future children daily. Uh... He, he squints and looks up at you. Uh, curious. I've never seen what you are. You make children? Well, of course. Yes, um, Alpha, Alpha, do Alpha. not do not show him. Do not show him your child. I just But I think I am proud of my child. Are you not proud of your children? I don't have yeah, Jane. Let him show off his child. And Potentially and most likely blow up the shop. Just because he were well, of course, it doesn't mean my child will not blow up the shop. Yes, have I am not that child. kind of father. I've I've seen the destructive uh, potential of your children, uh, Alpha. Let's let's not get sidetracked here. Uh, just yeah, just a uh, good sir. We are actually kind of seeking uh, information about a, a doll that was made for the king for a contest a couple hundred years ago. Do you know this story? We all know the story. Come, come. And he, like, guides you inside, and he goes and looks out, kind of closes the curtains up. That story almost destroyed my entire profession. We do not speak of it, but I know my great-grandfather told me the stories. It's still, it's still here, you know, that doll, that mannequin. It cannot be teared, it cannot be taken apart. It does not rot, it does not burn. It just sits. Perfect. Would you be willing to part with that mannequin? His eyes get really big. He's like, what? What makes you think I have it here? Didn't you say it was still here? (laughs) Or he said it doesn't rot. He didn't say he had it. I thought he said it was still here. Like, in the city, maybe, but... Anyway, 
Um, we need we need its help in trying to save the world from um, apocalyptic destruction. So, um, do you know where it might be? Yes. If you are to take it, you do not tell anyone where you got it. Oh, trust me. Is Mom is the word. The word is Mom. I do not I know your strange words. Word. What? Uh, I thought the word is traditionally bird. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard the bird is the word, but he is equally confused by that. Okay. It is yeah, okay. I, was, I am confused regularly as well. I was I was trying to make a joke, sir. Um yes, I promise uh we will not tell anybody where we got this. Then come come. He takes you into the back and there's it's kind of like a bunch of bins and then a stack of parts. Like he knocks over at one point a box that is full of uh, doll heads and they kind of roll around the floor, eyes spinning, looking up at you. It's definitely creepy and unnerving, but he just keeps pushing through until. He moves enough stuff out of the way that you can kind of see inside the rough shape of a human-sized mannequin. All right. It's, cool. it's far too heavy for me to move. It has not been touched in half a century, at least. All right. Um, don't look at me, I ain't strong. <laughs> no, I'm just kind of wondering uh, whether we should try and animate it right now or get it. Why would we want to animate it right now? Because if we animate it right now, we don't have to carry it out. But having it walk around the capital might not be a good thing. So, okay, um, I guess Dane will try to lift it out of the box. Gonna do a quick strength, quick strength check. Let's just make sure it goes smoothly. Yeah, famous last it's words. A, it's a low roll. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I think I'll be fine. <laughs> so that's a uh, seventeen. Yeah, you're you're fine. You pick it up without incident and move it out. You realize the guy's just old and frail. Oh, okay, perfect. So this thing is is uh, kind of human sized, then. Yeah, it's roughly like five eight. As you pick it up and move it, it's probably about a hundred pounds. Okay. Mm. All right. I asked the guy. Um, do you happen to have any of the masks that were used to animate this? Oh no! 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 Those are far too dangerous for me to keep here. Yeah. Okay, just checking. Okie dokie. All right, well, thank you. So tell me, how uh, notorious is this mannequin? Will people recognize it if they see it on the street? Most of the common folk know nothing of history. There's no need to worry. Maybe there's an occasional basement dweller, some poor soul that studies endlessly in their parents' basement that would recognize it, but they are not daywalkers. <laughs> daywalkers. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, I guess we will take our leave then, and thank you very much, good sir. You're welcome. Don't come back now, you hear? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, mm -hmm. I guess we are going you to You hear You hear a mumble as you go out the door. 
Finally, the curse is lifted. <laughs> oh, he said, finally, the curse is lifted. Yeah, he's just happy to be rid of it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we got it. We got it for cheap then. OK, um. So let's carry this thing. Unfortunately, we'll have to carry it uh, out of the capital and we're going to head south um, towards the a lake. Uh, so you wait, you want to go back across the sea? No, um, there is there is a lake that's south of the capital, right? Well, no, so the capital itself, where you're at, is just a small island that is fully industrialized, like fully, sorry, occupied, and oh. is completely covered in buildings. You can take the ferry to one of the surrounding uh, land masses that have various things on them. The, the Great Lake, the largest freshwater lake in the world, is on the continent to the south of you. Okay, how far how far away is that? I think it was like three days journey, something like that. Maybe four. Something it was like it was a ways. Okay. I'd kinda like that tome of Arcanorum. Um So yeah, I guess I guess we'll go we'll go look for Wait, that. What, what makes you think it's down by the lake, just out of curiosity? And that's what my notes say. It says headed headed south out of the capital towards lake down there. Tom Tome of well, I guess maybe not. I just wrote down Tome of Arcanorum power. So I think if I remember right, because I was just listening to that episode to kind of prep for this, uh I'm pretty sure it said that one was lost in the catacombs. Oh, beneath the library. Uh uh, the tombs. Oh, beneath the Capitol building? Yeah. Oh, well, perfect. Um, let us sneak down there, then. Uh, do you want to, I mean, it's still... I guess we'll probably have to wait until it's night. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably don't want to try and get there when the day guards are walking around. Right. Mm. Day walkers. <laughs> Are we gonna do a sneak mission like we did last time? I think you are. Oh well, yes. Yeah, so All right. Till night, then we'll sneak back into the catacombs. Awesome. Well, there's. Guards kind of wandering around, you know, doing their their watch. Yeah, you, know, you hear the ten o'clock and all is well. Walking around doing their thing. Ray can, pa- can cast without a trace. I can cast pass without a trace. But does she? Castros becomes Castoros. Well, Wait, you want to catch past uh, pass without a trace? Do y'all think we need it? Huh? Mm. Probably. Yeah, we, yeah. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Alrighty. Twenty-three. Oh yeah, nice. You are completely traceless. All right. <clears throat> Shrouded. So we just kind of head on down. On we go. Yep. All right. You make your way into that door, the familiar corridor going down. You find that the place seems to have been actually kind of cleaned up and spruced up a little since the last time you were here. Maybe some more offerings were given, something like that. It's just kind of nicer than it used to be. Okay, maybe that's just a feeling. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I got a feeling. <laughs> anyway, you 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 notice that on the entrance, and then you get down to where there's that first little T-junction, 
and a glyph written on the floor. Right. Oh, yes, I remember this. Okay. That's <laughs> here. I think we want to avoid that glyph. Yes. <laughs> so, looking at my notes here, um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out where we started from. Um, if you just want to work your way basically down the same path you did before. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where we started, that's all. Um, so we go up... Do we, did we just basically start from upstairs and then we come on head down and there's a um, kind of a... That's where you said the T-junction was with the glyph? Yeah, you came down the stairs, you kind of headed north, and then there's the T-junction with the cliff. Okay. Well, we're going to try and go around the glyph. I think we want to head left. Well, you are... Do you, you lead them down that way? Yeah. I don't have any better options. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, you are, you are correct. You go the correct way. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm assuming that this is going to end in another T-junction? It doesn't end in it. There's a couple as you go along. There's You come across one that heads south, and then you can see about ten feet away is another one that also heads south. And it continues to go down, and then there's something kind of down at the end that looks like it turns to the north. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'm not in the place where I thought I was. <coughs> Well, do you want to just roll a history check since you have been here before? Sure. <laughs> so that's a five. Not bad. A five. <laughs> well, you. Well, maybe we should all roll history checks. See if one of us remembers. There you sure. go. Sure. I mean, he was sure. just leading. Castle Scott, 22. Oh, jeez. Well, yes, Castle was the one that was running around ahead of everyone, so probably remembers it really well. That's fair. All right. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I watch Dane, like, struggle to figure out which way to go next, and I just, like, wa start walking down a different corridor. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I mean, it, it really kind of sucks that the dwarf that's supposed to be able to find his way underground is the one that gets lost. Especially since he's the one that made the map in the first place. Stupid it dice. Happens. Um, you just got confused. So, I do yeah. believe you got knocked out last time you were here. Possibly. Um, so looking at the map that I drew, um, somewhere around here there should be a room with a gargoyle. And then off of that room with a gargoyle, there's another room that has a book in it. Does that uh, sound familiar at all, or am I, or am I, or am I, or am I completely wrong? Map? I'm kind of thinking you're on the wrong map because I don't think that was on this one. I think that's on the next level down. Ah, uh, probably. Okay, well that makes sense. Because if you follow Casros, you're gonna go. You know, he leads you in, and he's like, "Yep, here's where we fought the mummy," and then you keep walking. And then that opens up into another room, which kind of loops back and takes you to like this big lava tube tunnel. And you guys had crawled through that. And then you come out on another end of the dungeon. Basically, you or catacombs. And, you know, you make your way through. It's the various offering chambers and and mm -hmm. so forth. OK. You even, and then you even. Ah, that's right. You walk into one of the rooms that has all the draconic faces carved onto the east wall. And so that should probably trigger your memory. Mm. We've been in many tombs and yeah. catacomb-like areas. Well, whatever. Good point. <laughs> all right. Well, Gasros just keeps leading, and you guys make your way all the way through until you find a stairway that heads down to the next level. Okay. 
the one that says deeper catacombs. Possibly. I White circle killed nine goblins here. Uh, uh, let me check my notes. Because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Da, 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 da. Oh, I think so. That might have been it. Got to use something better than numbers. Uh, I probably had something like that in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to scroll it. Oh, yeah. That was the place where <laughs> uh, someone wrote no secret door here. Okay. And you were like, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Mm. Okay. Okay. So no secret door. And then we go, looks like kind of west. And it opens up into another room. And then we head south from there. And there's a room with a collapsed floor. Are you, wait, you went down, right? Yeah. Okay, so you went down, and this is where you'll recognize... Let me just set you up in this situation from where you went down. This is where you recognize... Well, Casaros will look up and be like, Oh yeah, that's where I got that moonstone. And oh, then... Yes. Yeah, so then you look down and you're like, Oh yeah, it's this way, and there's like a path that leads us through, and you say... And then Alpha pipes in... And one of these tried to eat me. <laughs> Be yes, cautious. All the sarcophagus and everything. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So I think we, yeah, we definitely want to go down one more level. I was going to say, did we ever come across, like, the, the catacombs we're trying to reach now? I think so. Because I think... So that's where we are. Yeah. And then we went through this, and then either from here or from here, um, we had to crawl through a hole in the floor, I thought. Maybe? Maybe that was us. And then you have this right here. Sorry, I'm, I'm pointing out, you know, I, you know my, the maps that I drew. Um, ah. So... And then here, and then because that's what I'm kind of looking, at. and then I've got, okay, I've got that. Yes, yes, yes. Well, one yeah. of one of the things you guys did. I mean, you guys did a couple things while you were here that before that were rather interesting. One was you on kind of the I'll call it the east side of the map. You did find a room that had collapsed, and you could see a, a hole going down to the level below. And on the west side of the map, you found a staircase that led you down to an, a level below. Okay. But you had pretty thoroughly explored this level. I mean, it's... Yeah. I think I have almost everything marked off here. Yes. So, um... Yeah, I think... I think... <laughs> I think we would that hole in that in the floor. You did not, but if you want, oh, I, just, I don't think you did. I don't think you did. Oh, but okay. if you want to go do that, you can. I mean, there's nothing stopping you. Yeah. Well, I mean, why get why risk getting stuck? Um, we'll just take the. You said we found stairs leading down. Uh, yes, as I recall, off one of the rooms, you guys looped through and got to some stairs. Okay, well, let's go do that again. Ah, uh, yes, because there was a place where that was this foul odor filled the corridor, and someone scribbled, there is no way out. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, that was the one that took you down. All right. Oh, right, right. Okay, I see that. Yeah, so deeper catacombs. Yep. Yep, no way out. Bad stink. Deeper catacombs. We went down the deeper catacombs. And where does All that... Right. Where do we 
Or is that disgorgeous? By taking the stairs, it takes you down to a long corridor with a T-junction that goes north and south. That's the one I was looking at originally. Okay, so I think we want to go north. Do you actually go north? Yes. No, we just want to go north. We'll go. We'll go south. <laughs> no, yeah, north. <laughs> well, that's, I, I gotta check. I, I I don't know if he's just saying I think we do this, or if he actually does it. So I mean, that's why I gotta check. Okay. So, so yes. Okay, you. Awesome. Well, you head to the north. Uh, there's a T junction here. Uh, you can see up straight ahead of you to the north. It turns and goes to the west, or there's a room off to the east. Uh, I think we want to go... We're going to go east. Okay. Ah, this is the room where you find... Or you see the gargoyle. Yep. Yep. And then yep. there's... Mon- yeah, go ahead. As a, a monstrous humanoid that is in stone form against the far wall. Yep. Yep. And... North of that, there is a short passage that opens up into another room. There is. We're going to go there. All right. You go in and you feel a slight breeze. And yep. coming from the southeast corner of the room. Yeah. And somewhere in this room, um, I have written down that there's a book in there. There is. It's on the north side. Yes, I want to go take a look at that book. Okay. You take a look at the book. Does it it's, say anything? It's trying to find the I have a picture of it here somewhere. I'm just having a heck of a time finding it. There it is. So what you see when you go to pick it up is a Kind of a red brown leather book with a brass clasp holding it. It has brass corners reinforcing it and a kind of a gold inlay, almost like the two snakes of the medical staff, but it has wings on them, more like they are two dragons and kind of a handlebar mustache at the bottom. All right, I see it. Okay. I know I'm that um, good at describing. Yeah. <laughs> I see it in my mind. In my mind, definitely not on a Discord chat. Um, all right. Uh I'm going to do an arcana check on it. Okay. All right. Not so that's like a 13. You feel it is powerful. Like there is something emanating from it. Like it's a strong aura. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to pick it up. All right, you do that. Oh, fantastic. He doesn't blow up. <laughs> no, he does not blow up. It's just a book. <laughs> All right. You not never know. He's <laughs> been booby trapped. Who knows? Oh, and by the way, uh, Margaret has been holding your hand, Castros, and is just like terrified, but you can feel she's just like pulling strength of from you just like i keep going i'll keep going i'll keep going yeah i was just about to ask for about that yeah I, i've probably been helping her like through holes and everything and i'll just kind of squeeze her hand harder oh, yeah. almost like a reassurance like we're almost done then we'll be out of here and you don't have to worry about it anymore yep you you give her the you like three squeezes of reassurance every now and then but she never lets go of your hand and just keeps following you and you can tell there's times when she just shivers uh, out of fear, but never wavers, always stays right at your side. Aw. Okay. Alright. Awesome. 
Um, so does the book appear to be locked? It has a hasp of some kind on it, but it's not like key locked. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to try and open the book then. Okay. You successfully do so. You find that the metal is not fatigued at all. It just flips open. Okay. And then I open the book and I look at it and see if I can read it. You want to start at the beginning or like like cover page or what do you? Yeah, you, I'll start. Or you at the just beginning. flip into the middle. <laughs> no, we'll start at the beginning. Okay, you open it up and it says Arcanonorum is actually what it says. You think ah. that maybe this is close to what was being written elsewhere, but just spelling changes because people tend to phonetically write things down. Yep. This is very exciting. Okay. So then and I... You... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll flip to the next page. All right, you flip through the pages, and you can't really read what is written here. It's definitely magical. It is something beyond your comprehension as far as the written tongue, but there are some sketches that you can make out. There's uh, something that looks like a map. There's things that are drawings for what look like almost Gandhian inventions, things that you'd have found in bronze shop. There's uh, images of the old ones. Uh, you just keep flipping through and it gets, it gets weirder, but you, the whole, oh, and your fingers start tingling. Like you can just feel the power that is in this thing. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Um, if only there was some way to harness said power. Um, so my fingers are tingling as I'm... So obviously this is tons and tons and tons of arcane information. But nothing I can really sink my teeth into, so to speak. Not, not really. You feel like maybe if you were a wizard or something that it would be more of your style. Well, I mean, I am kind of close to being a wizard. Aldrich Knight. Yeah, you're a heavy wizard. Which gives you, like, the ability to get most of this, to, like, pick up the power, to, to get a lot of it. You're, like, you're, you're, you feel like you're on the cusp of just getting it all. Okay. <sighs> all right. Um, I hate to have to go and try and recruit a wizard to... Do you think the librarian would be able to read this? Who are you asking? Um, you. Well, I can't see. answer that. Oh. <laughs> oh, how dare you try and break the fourth wall. Sorry. Um, all right. Well, I'm just going to close the book up, slip it in my pack, and uh, away we go. Mm-hmm. All right. Which way you go away? Out. Up and out. Oh, you're leaving? You're going all the way back out? Oh, well, unless... Is there more stuff in the catacombs for us? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure don't... you can't answer that either. I um... just... Uh, I wasn't sure where your adventure was going. I, I was just surprised that you had gone down, like, three levels, and then you're just grabbing one thing and then running all the way back out. Well, we got most of this the first time through, didn't we? Yeah, you did. Yeah. I mean, it looks like there's a couple of spots where we did not finish up um, exploring down here. But... So the Arcanorum was down here. Um, Arcane and Norm. I'm just here, I'm trying to find out. Um... <clears throat> so, Stone of Spikes and the Perfect Chronography. Um, were those also lost down here? 
I actually don't remember what the the exact thing I said the last time. I'd, I have to listen to it again. Okay, well, let's see. I suppose we can go um, back out into the gargoyle room um, and continue west. And I think the corridor ends up turning north into a big room. And then through that biggish room, there's another T yep. where we went west last time, but there's also something going east. And I don't think we went that way. Uh, no, you did not. I don't think. I remember... That's right. You eventually made your way all the way around... Somewhere. Where was that? We went oh, west. No, you did... Yeah, you did make it up through that room. Because you made it across... I... Yeah, you made it pretty far to the east through several other rooms. Oh, did we? So at some point you made it all the way over. Because you made it to where you found Theseus's tomb. And you you fought his mortal remains. Yes. Right, but I thought that was kind of the west corridor that went down through a number of chambers, and then there was a mural room, and then we crossed a chasm. And yes, you did. A statue with a picture of the door. Um, that was a big oblong room where there was something going south and another passageway coming yep. out northwest. Yep. Um, so yes, I have that all written down, but okay, back here this. At this T intersection, there was a, a passageway going east that I don't the other going the other way that we I don't think we went through. OK, um, I've lost track of all of it now with all that description, so I'm just going to say yes, let's go. OK, <laughs> let's go. We are going. <laughs> all right, well, you start walking your way down that hallway and you all of a sudden notice a whistling noise that fills the corridor okay okay you just keep going all right a um, little well, further d i was gonna say probably stop and see if we can um you know figure out where the whistling noise is coming from or what exactly it is. Uh, roll an investigation. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, that is a 19. You immediately are like, this is really weird, guys. Um... That whistling sound is coming from the bricks themselves. Like, trust me on this. I'm a dwarf. I know when a brick is whistling. Okay. Um, They're always flat. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, that's weird, but I'm going to keep going. And then, oh, another 20 or 30 feet pass, and you start to hear a dripping sound ahead of you. Okay, so whistling and then dripping. Yep. And there is actual dripping in front of you. Do you want to check it or just walk through it? I will check it. Okay. You hold out a hand and a few drops fall into your palm and it's thick and viscous and you realize that it's blood. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Castros. I think I'm familiar with this. Do you want to shine your moonstone? Give us a little bit of light. This is familiar to me, but yeah, I will take out my moonstone and shine it. Okay, you bring it up towards the ceiling and the dripping stops as you pass the light of the moonstone over the stonework. Ah. Interesting. All right. Hey, normally dripping blood is a cause for concern. Um, yes. And as you pass the lighted moonstone over, you cannot see exactly where the blood was dripping from. But it does stop. I 
remember this. It's like some kind of weird magic thing. But I don't think it really led to anything dangerous. Alright. Well, I guess we shall continue on. <laughs> you push your way through and down into a corridor that narrows and twists and descends and deposits you you realize on another even deeper level than you have been at before. This place is rough. It's far more like the just like lava tubes, you know, even less taken care of than the previous like systems you've been in. Because you could tell before that all the catacombs were once just lava tubes that were kind of hollowed out and finished. And now you're in this area where, which is even more so it's like just the rawest of raw caves. All right. Hmm. I, I hope that makes sense. Yes. Hmm. Yes, it does. Cool. Okay. So what happens? So you are there and I am trying to find my map of that and just having a heck of a time with it. Because I did actually make way too many notes for you guys. Okay. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it drops you into this area and it's it's a rough like I said cavern there's kind of a passage that goes up to the north and then a slightly larger one that kind of goes southeast okay so rough passage north and southeast yes all right well what's uh you guys have a preference not particularly. I mean, yeah, I don't know where we're going, so... Wherever. Alpha, do you have an opinion? Hmm. I do not. Alright. Well then... Uh, southeast it is. Okay. As you move to the southeast, you can see the... There's kind of a bulbous chamber that goes off to the east, but stops within your vision. And then it opens into a just a large chamber, a good sized, trying to think, like you could put a house inside of this cavern almost. It's that big. Okay. And as you're kind of looking around you see in the far corner something start to move and at first all you see is the shine of what looks like a dwarven hammer but this can only mean good things it's moving almost on its own as it comes into your dark vision you see a hand wrapped around the hammer and then arms and then a face behind that and it begins crossing the room, moving towards you. Once again, only good things. All right. Um, how big is this figure? It is large. It, uh, twice your height. Oh, so twice Dane's height? Or yes. twice, like, twice, okay. twice Dane's height. All right, so he's going to be in the eight foot tall range. Okay. Ain't that fun? Um, all right. All right. We want to do our normal tactic of attack first, ask questions later. Oh, we can try and say hello. Okay. You can try. So, uh, Dane calls out. Hello, uh, just passing through, mean you no harm. Uh, what are you up to, good sir? There is no response as it continues to move towards you. All right. We tried. We tried. Okay, 
Alright. Attack! <laughs> um... I'm thinking here. Um, I could cast a moonbeam at it real quick. Um, Alpha, do you have any uh, any thoughts? He is not wearing any chrome, so I am conflicted. I know, me too. Um, but he did not respond to my greeting, so which usually is not a good sign. To be fair, I usually do not respond to your greetings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alpha, do you want to try and talk to this being? Hmm. Okay. Alpha walks up front and raises his hand and says, Hello, good sir. I marvel at the workmanship of your hammer. Are you perhaps a follower of Gond? Really quick... Do me a favor and roll me a performance check. Oh. Oh gosh, it's like the one thing he's Shit. super horrible at. <laughs> a minus one. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, that gets a nine. Okay, I'm laughing because I also rolled a nine, and I just wow. All right. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to say it It stops for a moment, just kind of almost a, a stumbling moment, and then shakes its head slightly back and forth. <laughs> We're communicating. Oh. Okay. Well, Alpha looks a little bit dejected and says, Oh no, it is not a follower of Gond. And you see him kind of prepare to engage. Oh, you don't want to convert him? <laughs> he's had enough. He's he's learned his lesson on conversions. Now it's uh, convert or die time. Oh, desperate times call for desperate measures. I guess. All right. <laughs> I, I see. I will notice. Uh, note Alpha's uh, readying stance and cast moonbeam at the thing. Oh, okay. That's a 14 that to hit. Ah, oh, one moment. It does not hit. You, the moonbeam flies past off to the side and it kind of looks at you almost as if there was shock and in turn raises its arm up like a from its side, oh, I guess it's hold. Sorry, well, it's holding the the axe or the the ha a dwarven hammer, and it kind of moves it to the side, and then twists its arm, uh, its elbow up, and in front of you, the stone just raises from the ground, almost making like a walkway barrier about three feet high and maybe six feet long. So it basically raised a stone shield? More like a guardrail. Yeah, okay. But yeah. I'm just trying to determine whether or not it's actually hostile or not. Well, we haven't really met anything in here that hasn't been hostile. <laughs> I mean, you do make a really good point. See, it's kind of funny. So Alpha has learned to you know, punch first and ask questions later, and Dane is trying to be like, you know, he's learned that, well, okay, maybe violence isn't the best, you know, first answer right off the bat. So it's 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 kind of funny uh, <laughs> watching this, or getting this evolution. Um, mm -hmm. Evolution or devil and devolution? <laughs> no, it's, it's changes. It's, it's definitely an evolution. Changes. Okay. Um. So I guess Dane's gonna try again. Uh. Uh, sir. Uh, we mean you no harm. If you mean us no harm. Uh. Can you talk at all? It spins its hammer. 
puts the head down and begins speaking or almost chanting and you do not recognize the language. Mm. But he put the hammer on the ground. He slammed it into the ground, spun it down, head down with the spike of the t- on the end of it, pointed down, and jabbed it into the ground. Yes. Oh, so not a not a peaceful kind of resting it on the ground. More of a I am preparing a spell to uh, smite you kind of an action then. Or a you shall not pass type of moment. Yeah, that's same, same. Okay. We can never seem to make friends, can we? No, not so much. All right, well, uh, shall we roll for initiative then? Right, it, to, are you going to just like charge and attack? Well, not charge necessarily, but, you know, I can launch a spell at it. Um, Alpha could charge and attack. Ray could shoot it. Uh, Because if if you guys suddenly want to jump to an attack, you can roll initiative and attack. But if you still are trying to do something else, like technically at this moment, you are not in combat. So you could someone could do something. But if you guys just want to jump to an attack, you can do that. Right. Yeah, I want to try using the the masks of some kind. I mean, yeah, I was, I'm I'm guessing we carried the mannequin all the way down here. Uh, oh yes, you did. <laughs> like where we have dropped it off. <laughs> I I guess I can put the simian death mask on the mannequin and see what happens. That's not a good idea, but okay. <laughs> It's an idea. <laughs> it's an know. idea. It's an idea. Uh, I, I I don't know. This probably seems like a bad time to be experimenting. Uh, it is. I don't know. Is there ever uh, really a good time? I mean, it's never really a good time to experiment. Never with us, no. Any experimentation on our half is bad. <laughs> All right, Ray, what do you think? Well, I'm the one who suggested using masks, but apparently that's out the window. Well, not necessarily. Um, Castros, what do you think we should do? I don't think there's any reasoning with it. So probably our best bet is just to attack. Alright, alright. I guess we'll we'll move to attack. We'll roll for initiative. Hey. Go for <laughs> it. Ed. <laughs> that's uh, like, I think this is a really bad idea, but okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, well, Caspros and it have already kind of done a couple things, so I just need Ray, Dane, and Alpha. I don't think Caspros is doing yeah, that. I guess the moonbeam. Oh, that's right, you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, oh, Jesus. Ray got a I rolled on an initiative. Oh, sorry, I, there was too much talking in there. I, I lost who said what. I think Alpha said he rolled a 15. Yep. Uh, Ray got a dirty 20. Ooh. All right. Dane got a three. (laughs) He's still on the fence. All right. Well, then I'm going to say, Ray, it's on you. Ready? I'm going to shoot him with one of my random arrows and see what happens. Okay. That's a 17 to hit. Uh, In this situation, I think it's appropriate it hits. Are you saying it's AC is 17? You're catching it off guard. You hit. Oh, that's not good. Alrighty. Well, the random thingy is a 79. Oh, 79. I don't even have it up yet. Crap. Sorry. I'm not prepared. Oh, oh no. Where did I put it? Oh, avalanche is coming down. I did not come prepared. What? I found it. Hold on. I'll, I'll send you it later, Ben. I'll, show, I'll send nope. you it. Nope. 
I just needed to um, oh. open the the tab. I just it, I, actually it, it, it this makes sense. It, the seventy nine. I just looked it up too. Considers full cover to be half cover. So it's ricochet. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, that's seven range. damage from the arrow, by the way. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I feel like there should be an additional advantage on that, but I think that's very appropriate. I think I need to have you start rolling maybe for the random arrow before you even fire, because it might help change things. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna do the same thing again, oh. because extra attack. Okay. So you roll what it, the arrow is first. 45. And then to hit... Yeesh. Is a 13. Ah, uh, well, I'm glad that one missed because that was a hollow tipped arrow. Yeah. It just like chinks off the body. What would a hollow tip arrow have done if it hit? Well, it says that it breaks off inside the victim, causing more damage. Oh, okay. It it does give a minus one to hit, but does an additional one d four damage per round. Okay. So, All right. Who's next? Hold on. It it kind of gets hit and is like, oh, uh, uh, by that first arrow, and its hammer was on the ground, so it brings up both arms. And that little wall that you had first seen shoots up and then the whole chamber just becomes blocked with a solid stone surface. And it shoots up right in front of Alpha's face. So Alpha, you've got a big stone slab inches from your nose. Okay. He starts punching the stone. Okay, uh, give me a couple of uh, d20s. I got the stone has AC. <laughs> All right, we'll do attack rolls. Twenty five. Yep. Twenty one yep. and twenty three. Yep, you hit all three of them. <laughs> okay. Do I have to roll damage? Yep. All right. <laughs> This is five E. Literally everything has hit points and uh, an AC. Okay. As, as the stone wall comes up, you just see Alpha start punching his way, uh, working his way through it, because there's a heathen on the other side of the wall who's not following Gond and is against the will of Gond. So he just starts punching the wall and deals twenty six damage to the wall. Oh jeez. Yeah. So <laughs> you. Fight every mountain. <laughs> you literally see chunks of, of rock start just flying off as Alpha is, you know, hitting as hard as he can. <laughs> and uh, Dane. Gonna, yeah, and he's not going to stop unless you give him a reason to otherwise. Okay. Um... All right. Um, I guess. I mean, anything that Dane would try and cast would end up, you know, possibly hitting Alpha. So, um, and he's definitely not using his axe on a stone wall. It just seems like a bad idea. Um, Does anyone have haste? No, I don't think so. Yeah, we have no buffers in the party. Otherwise, thinking like everyone just dump every buff you can into Alpha and turn him into a like human drilling machine or a top seven, actually machine machine. Not not so much on the human part. Not many of us are support. <laughs> yeah, I mean the only thing I have that's anywhere kind of close su from, for support is protection from evil and good. So I don't think that's going to help. Um... You know, I could try and do, you know, Firebolt, Ray of Frost, Firebolt, Ray of Frost. Because um, those are both cantrips. 
and have the you know the, the heating and the cooling effect on the stone kind of crack it up but uh, Ooh, again, that's good logic I like that uh, so hey, I, anyway, I, I'll, I'll, yeah go ahead I was gonna say this is another point where college changed me you can definitely make the argument if it's a good argument I will easily be swayed <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then uh, uh, I'm going to tell Alpha to step aside, and I'll cast a Firebolt at it. Ah, better yet, time it in time with his attacks. Since, <laughs> you know, he has his, his fists are already basically uh, molten, because he has, like, fire fists of fury. So, like, you help superheat the stone as he's punching it, and then uh, in between swings, you blast it with a Frostbolt to uh, chill it down and help him burst through. Okay. All right. Teamwork. Yeah. So, uh, what do you want me to cast first, then? The, the Firebolt or the Ray of Frost? Firebolt. We superheat the stone first. All right. Uh, here we go. Firebolt. Oh, crap. Um, that would be a 12. You've fire it off, but it doesn't do anything to the stone. Yeah, I figured. Um, all right. Um... It's still heating up a little bit anyway from the blows. Friction. Impact. Yeah, yeah but it's not like that super heat that you were going for. Yeah. Oh, we can still try the frost effect. See okay. if it helps. All right. Try the frost. I can't be rolling threes all the time. <laughs> Sometimes. Jesus. Rolls a six instead. So that's that's a fifteen. Oh yeah, that hits. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, what level am I? I am ninety. Okay. So takes one d eight cold damage. But since I am, uh, okay. So two d eight cold damage. So that is nine cold damage. Nice. Okay. So the way I'm imagining this, since uh, Alpha gets three, basically three standard attacks, two regular and a bonus uh, martial attack every round, it's like he punches, then you blast, then he punches, then you blast with the cold, then he punches again. And we just continue this cycle going on. Okay. Um, do you want me to just do cold now, or do you want me to keep going with the alternate between firebolt and cold? Wait, do you get three attacks also, or two? I get two. I get two per round. He's just All asking right. for the so next round. Yeah, for next round we do the same. But like, fire this... and cold. Okay, but, alright, so... Let's... You guys do that. Then, I mean, Kassos is there, so he now can do something. If you guys have gone through that cycle. I mean, I don't really know how I'm supposed to what I'm supposed to do to help this. I don't have the brute strength or spells to kind of bust through this wall. Yeah, neither does Ray, so... I just stand off to the side, like, pat Margaret and just be like, there, there, it's gonna be okay. It's it's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Why? Just let the other boys be boys for a bit. Why is he <laughs> punching the wall? Why? What is going on? This doesn't make sense. Margaret, you're gonna have to understand that when you're with us, nothing will ever make sense. But in this case, it's to try and get to this, uh, guard-type situation that's blocking this pathway that we're trying to get down. But... Uh, why? Alpha just turns his head and says, Evens must be punished, and turns back and continues his work. Yep, what the metal man said. Margaret, heathens must be punished. Uh, oh, okay. She's very, very confused. Yeah, I can tell. It's okay, Margaret. Eventually, it'll not really make sense, but you'll learn to understand. It doesn't make any sense. All right. Okay. So, um... All right, Ray, I'm guessing you're not going to do anything either? No, not really. Okay. So, Castros and Ray kind of forego, they just kind of wait. Um, mm -hmm. and I... So, go ahead. 
I lost you, I thought. That was all. Oh, so Castros and Ray are just going to wait. They're not going to do anything. So then it probably goes back to Alpha, right? It does. So, given that you guys are just going to be alternating, pounding your way through the wall, I think we we stop here, fading out on the scene of Alpha and Dane just blasting this wall, heating, cooling, punching your way through. There's rock chips flying around like crazy. And we pick up here next time in this rather strange scene. <laughs> Very strange scene, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably imagining everyone else in the party is just kind of covering their ears, being like, oh, God, because the sound of this is pummeling through. It'd be like, tongue, 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 tongue. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> Margaret's just holding on to Casseros, like, trying to kind of, like, seek shelter and cover herself. Ray is probably holding her ears like, ah, damn it. <laughs> And Jeremy is just, like, curled up like, oh, God. And Jeremy's like, not again. again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Jeremy has a lot in common with a bowl of petunias. (laughs) So, yeah, that's... I'm, I'm a little conflicted about this. Like, is this just trying to say we really don't need to be going through here? And, or, or kind of what I have no idea really what's going on so I'm a, I am you know, I should probably sign off the kids have uh, school in the morning so this has been an Azentuary LLC production find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for our character bios merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening. Pure chaos. Excellent.